Yo, Coach in the Fight here, talking about covenants here and how uh, tomorrow is actually the covenant celebration. It's the day that we are to celebrate the, the covenant. Um, um, the Bible really doesn't call a certain feast on there, but in this class, I'm going to show you how the um, forefathers actually celebrated the covenant on that day. Now, this chart that we're looking at comes from Clarence Larkin's book, Dispensational Truth. He's one of the guys who um, did a lot of the charts that people use today as we talk about you know um, uh, events that has happened and are to happen in the scripture but let's jump over and get into uh, these covenants here in this chart he 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 kind of gave us a, a diagram of all of the covenants from the Adamic covenant and all the way through to the new covenant and we're not going to go into detail on these like we did in that other class we just want to touch on them real briefly so the first one we're going to talk about is uh noah noah when he was given the covenant after uh he got off of the ark we're in jubilees chapter six looking at noah in the third month the month Sivan. and um this verse here is verse verse uh, 17 it says for this reason it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the feast of weeks in this month once a year to renew the covenant every year now this whole chapter here is about noah and the covenant that he received um that rainbow in the sky and how he was told that you know there were no longer there will never be another flood to cover the, the entire earth well all of that was what we call the uh, Noadic covenant I believe is pronounced but you can see that over there in Genesis chapter 9 through uh, verses 1 through 27 and in Genesis chapter 9 verse 13 the Noadic covenant but for the important part about this class is how we see that it was in the feast of weeks the feast of first fruits that he set that he received that covenant well we can see in this chapter how that's when he received this covenant and we also see that it was actually considered the covenant festival the feast of weeks after we have the uh, noadic covenant we have the abrahamic covenant given in all of these verses there in Genesis but if we jump over to Jubilees chapter 15 we can see when he celebrated it you see right here in uh, verse 1 of Jubilees chapter 15 that Abraham celebrated the feast of first fruits uh, in the middle of the month and you see right here in verse 2 his he's made his offering on first fruits which we know that the feast of weeks is the feast of first fruits but then when you jump down here to verse 4 you see that the father is about to make a covenant with Abraham and when you look down through the rest of this chapter you see that it's all about the covenant that the father made with Abraham that covenant that you read over there I think it's in uh, Genesis chapter 15 it's in Genesis chapter 15 you can read about all of the covenant that was made with Abraham well over here in this book of Jubilees we find out that it was actually during the feast of weeks that that covenant was made now so we we don't know the covenant given to Adam we don't know when that was we can but we know when the covenant was given to Noah we know when the covenant was given to Abraham the next one that got a covenant was Moses that's what's called the Mosaic covenant let's see when it was given for that we have to jump over to Jubilees chapter 1 and verse 1 we see that in the first year after the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt and the third month on the 16th day of the month was when Moses got the two tablets of stone of the law of the commandments that's when Moses got the commandments written in stone was on the 16th day of the third month which we know the 16th day of the third month is the middle of the third month which is the same time that um, Abraham and that Noah was celebrating the uh, um, uh, uh, feast of first fruits. So is so from this we can deduce that 
even Moses got his covenant during the Feast of First Fruits, and we can find that it's actually on the 16th day of the month that what actually started sunset tonight. Let me show you one more thing before we close out. Why is this so important? You have these covenants here. All of these covenants, we don't, the scripture don't tell us when Adam got his covenant, but from what we've gathered from these other three, we can almost safely assume that Adam got his during the Feast of Weeks. There are a total of eight covenants given. We've talked about what one, two, three, four, five covenants so far, and all of them seem to have been given during the uh, uh, feast of first fruits. Two of them we just made assumptions. Uh, three of them that we were told directly that they were given during the feast of first fruits. Um, we don't know when the, the divinic covenant was given. That was given to David, and we don't know the timing at least i haven't found the timing on that the palestinian covenant that covenant is the one we're in now is really the tribulation covenant it's when we realize that you know that the mosaic covenant is how we are to survive the tribulation it talks about the covenant angel over there in exodus chapter 20 chapter 21 22 and 23 talks chapter 23 is what talks about the covenant angel if we're to keep the covenant do everything the covenant says um then we'll get that covenant angel that will be our protection i would suggest you go ahead and read that for yourself guys so that you can see that there's nothing in there that we shouldn't be doing and it's something that we should be adhering to now, this what they call the tribulation covenant or the Palestinian covenant, what it's doing is just allowing us to get back into that um, that uh, uh, Mosaic covenant. You can see, read about it over in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1 through 10, which basically says that, you know, when you realize that, you know, you want the father to be your father, when you want the creator to be your father, then you will go back and you'll embrace the Mosaic covenant. That's over there in um, uh, Exodus chapter 20, chapter 21, 22, 23. It actually ends at verse 7 of chapter 24. But I say all that to bring us to the eighth covenant, which is the last covenant, which is actually called the new covenant. Now, this covenant, you can read about it in Jeremiah chapter 34, verse 2. 31 through 37 you can also see the same thing repeated in hebrews chapter 6 verse 7 through 13 but uh this is the new covenant this is the covenant that we're actually waiting for now we've gotten those of other covenants on the feast of first fruits are we to get the new covenant on the feast of first fruits well i don't know i don't i don't know if that's going to be the case or not i don't i don't mean to set dates or anything because it could be uh, Pentecost 2038 I don't know but the thing about it um, the feast of first fruits is important when it comes to these covenants as we've seen and so I believe why we should be on watch for the new covenant the covenant that is to be written on our heart um, and that, like we see over there in Jeremiah chapter 34 so go over there like I said go over there and read Jeremiah chapter 34 verses 31 through 37 so you can read about this new covenant so if it does occur you can know what it is to be looking for you'll know what to expect you'll recognize it when it gets there again jump over and if, it, if nothing happens um, be sure to jump over there and remember the covenant that we are in now that's the mosaic covenant it starts there with the ten commandments in exodus chapter 20 but it goes all the way to uh the end of uh, exodus chapter 23 it's actually four chapters go ahead and read that and i do suggest that you read that because you know you'll be able to stop and pause and meditate on it and you'll be able to make sure that there's nothing in there that we shouldn't be doing you know, it's not anything about sacrifices or anything in there about uh, dietary laws or anything like that. It's really mostly about how we treat the father, how we treat ourselves, how we treat each other and how we treat the land. And you won't find anything in there that we shouldn't be doing. So go ahead and read that. And if you would go ahead and subscribe to our channel, hit the like button if you um, got something out of this class, hit the dislike button if you didn't, uh, leave comments if you will, and pray for us.